Hey, friends all over the world. Woke up a little bit, just a little bit ago, but I came to you with this word of warning. And if you've never heard a live video from me, and this is your first time, I would recommend that you pay very close attention to what I'm saying. If you've heard me before, you need to listen to me because this is very serious what I'm about to share with you. This is very serious what I'm about to share with you, friends. They are trying to silence you. They are trying to silence you. Now, I want to give it to you this, the way I, I, I got it. You know, I want to make sure that I'm true to this warning and true to this word. So I think it was last night I was about to, um, I was in a meeting and it just came to me and I began to think about this. And then I'm, I'm, I want to give it to you the way that I got it. And then I went to sleep last night and I had a very vib, vivid and disturbing dream. I want to share it with you. And then I want to explain to you why I'm making this video and why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. So last night I had a dream that had several parts. I'm going to talk about one main part of the dream. And the main part of the dream that I had, I was walking out of a building and uh, people were giving away, you know, those, those signs those yard signs, you know, when a candidate's running for office, they'll have a yard sign. And uh, they were giving away these yard signs of all these liberal candidates, like these liberal politicians. And so as they were giving out these signs of these liberal politicians, I can remember in the dream, uh, like breaking the sign, like I bent the sign because I didn't want it. And I threw it in the back seat of my car. And when I was in the parking lot, of course, I'm backing out and, and I'm backing forward and the car's trying to go behind me. So I'm trying to back forward. I'm trying to uh, go forward so that the car behind me can move. And all of a sudden, I see police lights out of nowhere. Police lights out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, I see a police officer and the police officer standing right next to my door. And he says to me, he says, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, no, I'm just backing out. He says, do you know that, you know, the violations that you committed? I said, officer, I didn't commit any violations. I didn't commit any crime. He said, yes, you did. He said, you, you parked too close to this car. And I said, officer, that's not a crime. And then he said to me, he says, that sign in your back seat, he says, defamation of property is a crime. And he begins to rail all of these accusations, Right. To, to, to intimidate me and to get me to uh, acquiesce to his authority. But in the dream, I recognize that his authority is not even legitimate. I don't even know if he's a real officer. And so he's, he's, he's saying all these things. And of course, I woke from the dream. And there's, there's two parts that I need you to understand from this prophetic dream that God gave me. Two parts to this dream that I want you to understand. On the one hand, in the natural, in the natural, what we are seeing is the policing of consciousness. I want you to get this. There is a policing of consciousness going on. In other words, the intent is to create a police state where a Gestapo, which means that, that your thoughts your, what you're reading, what you're thinking, what you're saying is being surveilled so that you can come under the authority of the power or the power of this policing. And so, um, you know, we're living in the age now where it's not just about what you say. It's about what you think. They want you to think like them. They want you to, they want you to, uh, agree with everything they say. And if you don't agree with everything they say, they want to impose consequences. They want to impose punishments for not coming into agreement with everything they think. Now we're talking about in the natural. 
We're talking about in the natural. We're talking about in a physical or cultural sense. And this is what <clears throat> we call cancel culture. Oh, there's a part of the dream that I didn't tell you. So as the, as the officer is, is saying all these things, I keep on talking. I keep on insisting. I keep on declaring. I keep on standing and I keep on speaking. And all of a sudden, he diverts his attention away from me to other people. And these people, you know, are people that actually think like he wants them to think. But because he's so inflamed, he starts attacking his own people. Now, I want you to see the prophetic significance of this dream. So that's the natural that I told you about earlier. But there's a deeper spiritual meaning behind this. Friends, listen to me. The enemy and his cohorts are trying to silence you. The devil and his demons are trying to silence you. They're trying to get you to acquiesce to their intimidation tactics. They're trying to get you to abdicate your spiritual authority. And ultimately, they're trying to get you to be quiet. Because you must understand that when you, when you understand the word jurisdiction, jurisdiction, the word jurish means, juris means law in Latin, and the word diction means to speak. Your authority is connected to what you say. And this is why the devil has been fighting the church, has been fighting the church with such veracity, is because he understands the power that lies in our mouths. And so what has he been doing? He's been trying to bring accusations against you to silence you. He's been trying to bring charges against you in the spirit to silence you, to keep you from speaking God's word, to keep you from declaring your, the, the truth that you know to be the truth. You see, see what we call cancel culture is actually a spirit of accusation, a spirit of accusation. And what am I telling you today? Keep speaking. Don't be silenced. Don't be silenced. You know, we are living in what uh, 5782, what is known as the decade of the pay. And the whole agenda of all of this was to muzzle the mouth of the church, to get the church to be quiet. Don't say anything. Stop talking. Don't, don't speak. And if you speak, I'm going to, I'm going to attack you. If you speak, I'm going to punish you. If you speak, I'm going to make you sick. If you speak, I'm going to come after your children. And so the, this, this spiritual terrorism that's been taking place is designed to silence you and to shut you down. But I submit to you, friends, keep talking. Keep speaking. Don't you stop speaking. Don't you stop knocking. Don't you stop asking. Don't you stop seeking. Keep saying the word until you see the manifestation of God's power. Don't let the enemy silence you. And this is why the other aspect of this dream is that you need to guard your heart and your life against the accuser of the brethren. It says in Peter that, uh, it says that your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The word adversary is the Greek word antidikos. It means a legal opponent or a litigant. In other words, the devil is litigious. He's always looking for a spiritual tort against you. He's always looking for grounds to accuse you. So you need to be in right standing with God. Make sure that your heart is right. Make sure that your mind is right. Make sure that your, your love is turned on. Do not give the devil grounds. Don't give him grounds. We need to make sure that we guard our heart in this season. I'm telling you, friends, this is a word of the Lord to you. This is a word of the Lord to you. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. But make sure when you're speaking, you're speaking from a place of righteousness. You're speaking from a place of righteousness. I prophesy this over you that what the devil has designed to be a police state, God is designing to be a release state. Let me say that one more time. What the devil has intended to be a police state where you can't think, you can't speak, you can't function, you're under intimidation, you're under fear, you're under control. What the devil has ordained to be 
a police state. God has ordained to be a released state. And this is going to be the season where you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to see the release. You're going to, you're going to see the release. You're going to see the release of bondage, the release of sickness and disease, the release of bitterness. You're going to walk in the freedom of God. See, the Bible says, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. This is your time of release, not your time to be policed. And so I want to decree this over you because the enemy is big mad. He mad mad. I'm talking about he's so mad at you because you just keep on running your mouth. He tried to shut you down a long time ago. He, he hit you with COVID-19. He hit you with all this stuff. He hit you with family drama. He hit you with, with, with uh, financial duress and stress. He hits you with confusion, mental bondage, strife in an attempt to shut your mouth, but keep on talking, keep speaking. Don't you stop speaking. Don't you stop declaring. Don't you stop praising. And I'm going to tell you why you can't stop praising. The Bible says in second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe on his prophets. So shall you prosper. And the next verse, verse 21 says, and the people were instructed and began to praise the Lord. And as they opened their mouth and praised the Lord, hear this, God set an ambush against his enemy, against their enemies, and the enemies began to fight themselves. This is what's happening in the culture. As the church continues to stand her ground, like I did in my dream, I insisted upon my righteousness. I insisted, not self-righteousness, but I insisted that I had committed no crimes and, and I had done anything, I'd done nothing wrong. Listen to this. The officer began to fight folks he should have been siding with, other liberals. And this is what's happening today. That's why the cancel culture is canceling itself. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. So you got to come on, don't miss this. The cancel culture has been attacking itself. They're canceling each other now. People who are actually in cahoots with each other are canceling each other. And this is divine design by God. This is Second Chronicles 20, 21 playing out before our eyes. God's setting an ambush against the enemy. And the enemy is fighting himself. You're going to see, you're going to see major uh, uh, media coverage of, of liberals being accused by other liberals. You're going to see major media coverage of, of people in positions of power with nefarious agendas being accused by other people in positions of power with nefarious agendas. It's going to be, watch this, an ambush, a derision amongst those doing evil. God is about to scatter the camp of the enemy. God is about to, watch this, put to shame and confusion the camp of the enemy. They're about to fight themselves. Why? Because the church is standing her ground and opening her mouth. Don't let the year of the mouth become the year of the mask. Don't you be muzzled. Don't you be muzzled. Speak the truth. Stand your ground. Declare the word of the Lord. See, some of you are prophetic and devils tried to shut you down. That's why we don't even want to talk about prophecy anymore. We don't want to hear about dreams and visions anymore because the devil tried to shut that down. And now Christians are afraid to talk about what the Lord's showing them. And they're afraid to talk about what the Lord is speaking to them because they've been intimidated, because they've been hit with a spirit of fear. But I declare that where the enemy tried to sow fear, the spirit of God is sowing faith. And it's time for you to open your mouth and, and refuse to be silent. Hear this. In the kingdom of God, you do not have the right to remain silent. 